This is Hashtag Finance, presented to you by the Canadian Securities Exchange, the exchange for entrepreneurs, with your host, Anil Mall. Welcome, everyone. Thank you so much for tuning in to another Hashtag Finance episode brought to you by the Canadian Securities Exchange. I'm Anil Mall. I represent the CSE. And today we are talking psychedelics. Uh, I am sitting here virtually with Jeff Stevens. Jeff is the CEO of Psyched Wellness. This is a company, it's Canadian. It was listed with us in October of last year. And Jeff, thank you so much for taking the time to join us today. How are you? Uh, fantastic, Anil. Thanks very much for having me. It's a pleasure to be here and talk to your audience. Look forward to it. Absolutely. So, so when you guys listed in October, we we actually had a chance to do a virtual market open with yourself, your, some of your key team That's members. Right. Uh, it was a lot of fun. If anyone's watching and you have not seen that, we'll make sure to add a link. You can check out the market open and the message from Jeff and some of his key team members there as well. And if you haven't caught it and aren't familiar with the company, Jeff, why don't we begin by you giving our viewers just a brief introduction to what the company does? Yeah, thank you, Anil. Um, so Psych Wellness, uh, as Anil mentioned, is a Canadian company. We're listed on the CSC, our ticker is PSYC. And we're focused, obviously, in the psychedelic sector, but we take a very different approach. Uh, we're working with a mushroom that's called Amanita muscaria. And although it's a psychoactive mushroom, uh, it has never been a scheduled one drug. So that allows us uh, a lot of flexibility that our peer groups uh, don't have when they're dealing with scheduled one drugs, uh, being that our ease of import, export, and research and development. And then at the end of the day, uh, we're involved in some preclinical studies that we'll talk about in further detail. But at the end of that process, we don't have to then change legislation or lobby to change legislation. We'll be in a position uh, where, in our case, we'll be applying to the FDA for a new dietary ingredient and Health Canada for a natural health product number. So that allows us uh, the ability to, to do the science, to make sure that we've done all the safety uh, data to support it but then go to market uh, with a product where, you know, a lot of our peers who are doing some great work as well, um, they're in sort of a three to six year process. And, uh, and then they've got to work with legislation uh, around the schedule one drug compounds that they're working with. So that's the main differentiator. Amanita muscaria, that's the name Correct. of the, the, the mushroom that you guys have strategically decided to focus on. So there's a, that's what it looks like. Just for those of you, you, you'll all probably recognize it. You know, if we talked earlier, Anil, about how it's the, the mushroom from Super Mario Brothers or the mushroom from Alice in Wonderland. So we've been very fortunate where popular culture has done a great job introducing this mushroom to society. Um, however, people, although they recognize it, they don't understand what it is. Um, and, and when you do a Google search on it, for example, it comes up that it's poisonous. And, and for us, that was actually the opportunity because we actually took the time, my COO, David Shizzle, identified it as a psychedelic mushroom, took the time to do the science to, to identify that, in fact, it had been mislabeled poisonous. It, it does have some toxins in the compounds, but through our proprietary extraction protocol that we, we put in place, we're able to minimize those to the point that they're not harmful for human consumption. So uh, like all good things, you know, when they're in the micro cap land that we live in, there's a little bit of hair on them, but if you're willing to do the work, um, you can uncover a gem. And I think we've done that with uh, Amanita for sure. Absolutely. Jeff, I, I want to take it back a little bit because, you know, obviously we've seen a lot of companies within this sector come to market over the last little while. I want to go back into what inspired, drove you as a leader for your team and your key team members to come together to focus on this very niche sector. Yeah, so that's a great question. And, and you know, the founding group that sort of approached me and, and said, hey, Jeff, we want to do something in psychedelics. Would you be interested? Um, I had previously been president and CEO of a technology company and, and was looking for, for a new sort of opportunity and a new challenge. Um, so that core group, including myself, was uh, some you know portfolio managers, some deal structuring side, so on the sell side, um, and then some, some legal counsel that all had been active and involved early on in cannabis. And, and we all looked at what was happening a year ago in, in the psychedelic sector. And, and it felt very similar to eight to 10 years ago in the cannabis space with one major differentiator. And that is that you've got, you know, cannabis, it was a bunch of entrepreneurs who had a vision and, and worked hard and bootstrapped and really pushed to get to the point where after three to five years, you started having some institutional money and you had started getting some you know, the, the stigma, stigma was being removed in mainstream media. 
The difference with psychedelic is we have that mainstream media attention right now, talking about the benefits of psychedelics for various uh, mental health issues, physical health issues. And then you also have massive institutional money supporting these out of the gate, you know, Compass Pathway with Peter Thiel and Warren Buffett and Atai Life and, you know, big funds, big money coming in supporting this. And that's because this is really a pharma play to begin with. And, uh, you know, we're challenging, we're, we're, we're finding ways to help people with serious mental health issues with these natural compounds that have existed forever, but were demonized effectively for political reasons. So, you know, I think is very exciting. And as a team, we said, let's, let's get early because we knew that if you were a first mover, you had the best opportunity to gain market share, uh, to get access to capital. And we all know, you know, in the micro caps, it's as much the jockey as it is the horse. So you need the team that can support it. And, and then you need the idea, you need the, the business plan. And I think we've got both of that in place now. Absolutely. Jeff, so I want to get a little bit more into the background of your team members, as well as your advisory board, because you guys have, have a very strong advisory board behind you. Um, but before that, I want to talk a little bit more about Amanita muscaria, the, the actual mushroom you guys are using. What is the history behind this mushroom? I know you touched on it a little bit, um, where it was wrongly scheduled and, and, and in a different category. But do you want to maybe break that down for a bit more? And then I want to talk a little bit more about the actual science behind it and what the benefits are. Yeah, for sure. Well, listen, I, we're learning as we go every day as well, because there's there's so much to to this. And there's a fantastic community that exists of, of people who are very passionate about Amanita muscaria and the, the, the health benefits that they've experienced anecdotally from using it in, in the manner that they currently use it. Um, obviously, as a public company, we're taking a different approach. We take a very scientific approach to it and ensuring that we're doing everything, um, you know, with respects to putting a safe product on shelves and selling it in that in that fashion. Um, but we we do learn from that community and, and we, we acknowledge it and respect everything that they've done because because they've worked hard over the years to educate people on it. Uh, so Amanita muscaria has a fantastic historical story. It's been used for centuries by various indigenous groups, uh, the Siberian shamans. There is some suggestion which is content, contentious with respects to whether it's the story of Christmas evolved from, the uh, sorry, a story of Santa Claus evolved from the Siberian shamans and the Amanita mushrooms hanging around pine trees. There's debate over that. You know, we don't really get into it, but it does provide that there's a long historical use of this mushroom in ceremonies uh, helping people with uh, with sleep, insomnia, anxiety, various uh, various other issues that they've anecdotally said that has helped them with. So you know, from the the approach we take is we know it has been safely used for centuries, um, and and more recently it's been used. There's a lot of YouTube channels. There's a lot of groups who are doing really great work uh, educating people on the benefits of using it and trying to show them how to use it safely. Uh, so where we take it, where we're excited is to sort of go that next level and say, okay, now we're able to bring the capital that you can access through being a public company to do the scientific studies, to do the, all the work. You know, we're, we're about a million dollars into the process a year into this. So, you know, for individuals to take that on is challenging. So we're able to do that heavy lifting. And, and again, we always want to support that community exists because we think, you know, it, it, it's so much about inclusivity, uh, whether it's even in our own peer group with people who are working with other compounds. But yeah, Amanita is a fantastic story and, and pop culture's done a great job introducing it. And now we're trying to sort of turn the page over and say, okay, you recognize the picture. Now here's the mushroom and here's the benefits. Um, nice. You know, as I was saying, pop culture's obviously done a good job, as you mentioned, in having this mushroom ingrained in the back of our heads. Because even if you, the first thing you can think of when you think of a mushroom is that image of the red cap with the white dots yeah. and um, all that stuff. So there's there's obviously a large history behind it. Um, one of your key team advisory board members, Dr. Uh, Professor Nutt, pardon me. Dr. Professor, all of the above. All of the above. He's done right. quite a bit of research on strictly this specific mushroom going back, I think, 30 years, you had mentioned in our earlier conversation. Talk right. to us a little bit more about him and, and, and the research that he has compiled over the years. Well, listen, I, I, uh, I feel very honored to have the, the board members and advisory board members that we have on our team, and, and specifically Dr. Nutt, uh, Professor Nutt. He's, he's brilliant, he's passionate, and you know, if you look at sort of the, 
the conference circuit, if you will, for psychedelics. He's usually, usually one of the headline speakers. He's one of the thought leaders in the modern renaissance of psychedelics. Um, you know, he's the chair of the scientific advisory board for Compass Pathways, which is a two plus billion dollar company. So for him to join our board was a big win. Um, you know, initially we cold called him and you and I were talking, we sort of reached out to him and said, hey, we, we're working with Amanita Muscaria. We wanna take a product to market, any interest. And he was like, wow, like I did a paper on that 30 years ago no one ever picked it up. There was never, it couldn't really push it any further. And we're now in this position that you're doing something, I'd be interested. But, you know, here we are, two guys with a startup company, not even public. Um, he's got a lot of reputational risk attached to what he's doing, the companies he's involved with, uh, also being a professor at Imperial College. So he joined initially as an advisor. And then after two or three months, getting comfortable with how we were doing everything very professionally, very scientific, working with, you know, KGK Science, which is a really highly regarded uh, CRO partner here in Ontario, and, and doing everything properly, uh, he then agreed to join our board and, and help us lead the scientific committee as we move forward. So yeah, we're thrilled to have him on board for sure. Absolutely. And, and you know, obviously, I wanted to mention him because we were talking about the mushroom, but part of your team and your advisory board, you guys have a lot of influential well-educated people that have been focused on this sector. So I'm going to give you the next little while to talk about the team that you guys have put together to, to move your project forward and see the vision come to life. Yeah. Well, why don't I, I'll start with the board and I'll work my way down because, you know, we've got some great guys on there as well. Um, Michael Niederhoff's our chairman of the board. He's the, the president of Jewel Labs Canada, which is one of the larger e-cigarette and uh, vaping companies. Um, you know, he's a consumer package goods rock star and he gets a little embarrassed when I say that, but you know, he was with the first 10 employees with Red Bull Canada on the sales and marketing side. He brought muscle milk up into Canada and now he's heading up Jewel. So, you know, anything we need on the CPG side, when we go to putting a product to market, he's got access to it in Canada. His Rolodex is unparalleled. Uh, so he's helping us as we do sales and branding, as we get closer to completing our preclinical trials. Um, he also introduced us to Dick Tadish, who joined him at Jewel, and he was the head of government affairs. So his connection on the regulatory side is just fantastic. So working very closely with my COO, David Schizel, uh, so that everything that we do, the I's are dotted, the T's are crossed. When we make that application to Health Canada and the FDA, everything is tight. So those are two key guys. Um, Terry Booth joined our board very early, which was a great win. You know, everybody recognizes the name, um, you know. Terry undoubtedly was one of the pioneers in the cannabis space. And I know there's, we're on the tail end of that sort of trade and there's two sides to it, but you cannot deny uh, what he accomplished and what he was part of and uh, the access that he has to the capital markets and, and both in the U S and Canada are tremendous for us. And that was a big part in us being able to get a, a bot deal uh, financing from Canaccord. You know, and you know, I was institutional sales and trading for about 14, 15 years. I never saw a bot deal for a four month old private placement. And that's what we got. So I was very proud of that. It's very rare to see that where usually they're prospectus offerings and the free trading paper. So for a bank to give you a bot deal on a four month old private placement is pretty rare. And I, I think Terry had a big influence in, in our ability to get that. So that was great. Um, we also have on our board, um, sorry, Terry, Mike, Nick, um, the Professor Nutt, and then uh, Chris Hazelton, who was uh, on the Shell company side, but he's a fantastic public company. Uh, accounting side, and he's actually CEO of a company called um, University PropTech, I think, UPI. So he's a he's a great capital markets guy and, and good to bounce ideas off. So we've got a strong board. We've got the CPG, we've got the science, we've got the regulatory, and then obviously uh, with Chris, our audit committee. So we're, we're pretty tight on that side. And then what we really focused on was uh, shoring up all of that with a strong advisory board. And you mentioned that earlier. So uh, we've got Dr. Don Bacuna, who's a clinical therapist here in, in Toronto. She, uh, she is one of a handful of therapists who are trained with psychedelics and to train other therapists to use psychedelics in their, in their uh, approach. She has worked with Compass Pathways on some studies, and she's doing a phase two clinical trial at U of T right now for psilocybin and major depression. So uh, having her input and access to what she's done with other, other studies and, and bringing that broad range to us is, is key. Brian Tan County, who's leading up these studies for anti-inflammatory and antioxidant that we're doing with Muscovol. He's been a fantastic asset. We're very, working very closely with him. And uh, Kevin Feeney, we talked earlier about the community that exists around Amanita. He, he's actually written a book on Amanita muscaria 
and he works quite closely with a lot of the people in that community. And, and he's gotten a lot of anecdotal information from that and, and is sharing that with us and making introductions to, uh, to people in that community that can add value to the process for us. So, um, you know, we're thrilled to have, to have everyone on the team. And, uh, you know, I think when you've got a strong team that can help on the R&D side, it allows me as the CEO to be focused on, on the corporate side and doing the capital markets and, and talking to groups and working with our partners, our awareness partners. So I have a lot of confidence in, in the operational side with what David and the team are doing, which allows me to focus on, on you know, having conversations with groups like yourselves. Absolutely. You know, one, one thing I do want to bring up is obviously I haven't had a chance to meet your team face to face. But uh, we did all connect all the names that you mentioned when we did our virtual market open and the energy that you guys have is great. And that just shows to what you had just said, you know, you guys are all on that same wavelength and yeah. it shows um, in the final product. And speaking of product, let's talk a little bit about what you guys are working on together yeah. uh, as part of this mushroom, because you guys are in the process of developing a line of anim. Anamita muscaria derived pills, capsules and teas. If I'm so, not yeah, so we, we will get there. Initially, it will be in the form of a tincture, um, and and so we we talked about it briefly at the beginning where we are we're going the path of the health supplement side. So we're doing our everything we're doing in our preclinical trials, and and that's about a ten month process. Uh, but that's going to give us the safety, the efficacy. We just announced last week uh, maximum tolerated dosage. We'll move into the 14 day oral toxicity study. So these are all important data sets for us to, to then take that because we're the first company to ever really work in modern time with Amanita muscaria and muscimol. So we don't have the luxury of relying on previous studies. We're, we're pioneering it, which is, which is great, but it also takes a little more time. Um, however, when we complete that, we do make our application to the FDA and to Health Canada, we will then be looking to put our first product in, uh, in 2022, in the first half of 22, um, we will be looking to start marketing our products. And the first one will be a tincture and we will look to use other form factors as well as we go through that process. And so, so you guys are in that process of a preclinical trial study at the moment, correct? Correct. correct. Just yeah. a little bit of ways to go, but why don't you talk to our, our viewers and audience and myself included and educate us a, a little bit on what that process looks like. Because from this side of the screen, let's call it, yeah, yeah. it you don't, you know, we don't understand all of the, the hard work that goes into these separate steps that are needed to be taken uh, in order to get to those results. So why don't you walk us through what actually goes into that? Yeah, so it's, it's, a, it's a very uh, in-depth and, and comprehensive study that we're doing. And as I mentioned, because we are the first ones to do this, uh, we don't have the luxury of relying on past studies. So uh, we are doing it from, from, you know, from the A to Z. And, uh, and that involved at the very beginning doing our uh, toxicology assessment, our gap analysis, our path to market, and now being at the point where we're working with our CRO and doing these preclinical studies. So that's about a 10 month process. We're two months into it, two and a half months into it. And that consists of a bunch of individual studies that either can run in parallel or have to wait for the completion of another one. And, and that's why it takes so much time because you, know, you wanna determine the safety of the product. You wanna determine the uh, shelf life stability of the product. You want to determine long-term potential effects of the product. And that's why it takes that much time because you're doing that. And uh, although not very popular, and, and if there were another way to do it, we would, but it involves rodent testing as well, because we need to make sure that the, you know, all the organs are going to be safe through repetitive use of the product. Um, we're working on a microdose product. So when we get to market, it'll be a very low dosage of muscimol. Um, anecdotally, it's said they provide a very calming and a relaxing effect. And, and we know for a fact um, that it works on the GABA-A receptor. And that is one of the more important receptors in your brain. Uh, it is, is um, scientifically known to help people with uh, anxiety and, and, and troubling with those issues, so sleep, insomnia, anxiety. Um, and so those are some of the, the potential benefits from having this. Um, we're not making claims at this stage because we're just going step by step. Absolutely. But uh, yeah, it's a, it's a very exciting, um, you know, you will see a number of different updates coming from us as we sort of check the boxes on these milestones and complete these studies. And, uh, and we're also always looking for other, you know, I think we have a unique position in the market, Anil, because we are, again, we're focused on a legal psychedelic plan. So that gives us, it differentiates us from the peer group in the psychedelics. So as we move forward, we're really looking at 
what other plant or mushroom opportunities exist in nature that have some of these uh, medicinal or psychedelic effects that, that we can bolt on and add into what we're doing. Because I think there's a huge movement in society where we're looking for those natural health products that can ease some of our, uh, ease some of our mental and physical health issues um, and, and not go the farmer route. So that's, that's important for us. I really like how you touched on that point because that was one of the things I was going to, was going to ask you about. So I'm glad that, you know, it came up in conversation naturally. Um, you, you mentioned about some milestones that are coming up and you talked about what people can look out for. Where can they follow you guys and, and keep up with not only what you guys are doing, the studies, but also read up on some of your key team members and advisory board. Yeah, so we, uh, you know, we, we try to put everything that we do on, on our website. So that's a great place to go and find links. We, you know, we're pretty active, fortunately. You know, as you mentioned my team, they're great. Professor Nutt makes himself available for video interviews. Kevin Feeney just did one as well for us. And, um, you know, Terry will be available as well. So as we move forward, we're really trying to keep our website as that hub for all of that information. Um, you know, we, we do a lot with our awareness groups, so we're always trying to have content out, um, be involved in conferences or interviews where we can share, you know, what we're doing with Amanita and AME-1, which is our extract our extraction of muscimol, but also the, the sector and how we see things moving forward. And um, so, yeah, our website, reach out to me, my, my, my contact information is on every press release, um, Google, psychedwellness.com, you'll get us there as well. Perfect. Um, what I want to do is I want to actually leave the last minute or two with you um, for any message that you want to put out there for any of your existing shareholders that might be listening or even viewers that might be interested in investing or, or at least finding out more about what you guys do. Yeah, and I appreciate that. Well, before I do that, thank you for your time. It's a pleasure catching up with you again. And uh, yeah. So what I would like to leave you with guys is, you know, we're a passionate group. Uh, you know, we're included in the Horizon Psychedelic Index. Uh, we were one of the first 17, I think there's 20 companies in there now. So that was, that was a huge validation for us because most people, when they look at the psychedelic sector, they, they're familiar with, you know, psilocybin, magic mushrooms, LSD, DMT, there's, there's sort of comfort, but they hadn't really heard Amanita muscaria. And I don't think they were willing to sort of roll up their sleeves and dig into it until we were included in that ETF. So that was a great win for us. Um, what, I, what I'd like to say to our shareholders is thank you. You've been fantastic. You've been supportive. I, I appreciate when you reach out. And, uh, you know, we've got a lot of work ahead of us. We're looking forward to adding value, creating shareholder value. And, uh, you know, I think if you have uh, an interest in the sector, uh, we're in the very beginning or innings of this whole movement for psychedelics. I think there's a lot of exciting things to come. A Thai life coming public. Um, you know, in the first half of 2022 should be a great catalyst for the sector as a whole. And, uh, you know, I, I just, I'm really excited to be a part of it and, uh, you know, to work with such a great team and, and to work with groups like yourselves at the CSC. It's a real pleasure. Uh, much appreciated, Jeff. You know, what I was going to say is I, I look forward to watching you guys grow as a team and a company. Obviously, you have the support from all of us at the Canadian Securities Exchange. Should you need anything, you obviously know where to where to find us. And, you know, as we host more um, thought pieces and virtual events based and focused on the psychedelic industry, we would appreciate, you know, when when either yourself or some of your key team members are available to talk about it. Um, obviously, when you guys have more results and have completed this study, we'll definitely bring you back on hashtag finance and talk about it. But maybe what we can do is also include someone like Professor Nutt or one of your other advisory board members to talk about the history and just have a more more in depth conversation. You know, this this was something that we want to use as a way for our audience to find out about you guys, what you're doing and some of your team. And hopefully from there, they build, you know, um, confidence in what you guys are doing, follow you guys, and I encourage them to reach out to you and your team should they have any questions. 100%. You let me know. Uh, I'm definitely available anytime. And, you know, my team are, 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 they're all very busy, but they also prioritize time for us when, when needed. So you let me know and we'll make something happen. It'd be great. Absolutely. I think this, this education, um, when it comes to this specific sector is very needed because, you know, as much as information there is out there, there's a lot of misinformation as well. Oh, for sure. And having, having executives like yourself come on platforms like hashtag finance and talking 
freely about what you guys are doing, what drives you, your passion behind the company and, and, and putting this product out, you know, really goes a long way. So I appreciate you guys. Oh, it's my pleasure. Thanks very much. Perfect. Have a great weekend. Yep. You as well, Jeff. Thank you again. Right, um, it, I've been Anil Mall with the Canadian Securities Exchange hosting Hashtag Finance. And we've been talking to Jeff Stevens, who is the CEO of Psyched Wellness listed on the Canadian Securities Exchange. Uh, if you find content like this informative, please hit the subscribe button, hit like, feel free and share it with your friends and family. Uh, we thank you all for your support and uh, enjoy. Awesome. Thanks, man. This has been another episode of Hashtag Finance brought to you by the Canadian Securities Exchange. Thank you for liking and sharing our content and don't forget to hit subscribe if you haven't already.